Hi guys, this is the second video on our study of electromagnetism. Uh, in this video, we'll cover basically DC motors or turning effects of current carrying coils in magnetic fields. Now, um, this is learning objective is only uh, required for the pure physics students. So for the pure physics, uh, for the combined and NA students, there's no need for you to view this video. For the pure physics students, uh, the first two were covered in um, the first video. I'll link the first video in the description box. So you can just have a look at it so that you understand whatever I'm talking about in this video, which is basically DC motors. Right, just to recap what we learned or what was covered in the first video, we learned that current has a magnetic effect. When current flows, there's a magnetic field set up around the current. All right, we use this then in applications of electromagnets. Electromagnets are basically when electricity flows in a wire, it becomes like a magnet. So only when electricity flows, it becomes a magnet. So that's why it's called an electromagnet. Now, um, the thing that we need to know in current magnetic effect of currents is that the current, the direction of the magnetic field of a current can be determined using the right hand grip rule. Now the right hand grip rule is you basically just giving a thumbs up sign with your right hand. Alright, so just a thumbs up sign with your right hand. So if you are in a straight wire, so you use the thumb, the straight portion of your thumbs up, it's a straight portion to indicate the direction of the current. And the direction of the magnetic field is then told by your curling fingers. Now, if your wire instead of a straight wire is a coil wire, meaning it coils around an object, then you use your fingers to indicate the direction of where the current moves. So either from front to back or from back coming to the front. And your thumb then indicates the direction of the magnetic field. Alright, so just to show you how it looks like in a wire that is straight and the current is going up, if you use your right hand grip rule, alright, pointing up, your fingers curl in this direction so that's how you get the magnetic field if your current is connected in a coil flows in a coil which means it goes from the front to the back and then your magnetic field is then told by the direction of your thumb now uh, another thing that we learned before this was in the first video was the direction of the force can then be determined by using Fleming's left hand rule now Fleming's left hand rule is just you using your left hand and making it into the shape of a gun first and then your middle finger sticking out 90 degrees to that all right so um, you remember it by using father mother and child uh, this is the direction of the force that is felt this is the direction of the magnetic field when this current is flowing in this direction so if you have a wire and the wire exists in the magnetic field external one provided by a magnet then that current and magnet the current which is a magnet and the external magnet will then interact in such a way that you will produce a motion on the current all right the force will be felt on the current or uh, carrying conductor which is your wire and, uh, and it will move in the direction and we tell that direction by using Fleming's left hand rule now uh, Fleming's left hand rule is a tool we use to determine the direction the, the reason why there are forces felt whenever a current flows in an external magnetic field is because the magnetic field of a current because remember point one current has a magnetic effect the magnetic field of the current will interact with the external magnetic field and this results in a force being felt on the current carrying conductor which is just basically your wire that is carrying the current now this is not this is just a very fanciful way of saying magnets meet magnet and you have some kind of force it's not something that is very difficult to understand and you have a north and a south you feel an attraction then you have a north and a north they are light poles you feel repulsion it's just that when you have a straight wire like this your north and south are not very clearly defined so the Fleming's left hand rule is the tool that we use to help us identify the result of this magnetic magnetic interaction so Fleming's left hand rule all right so this is how a DC motor looks like at a very simple mock-up all right you have an external magnet north south you have a coil of wire and the coil of wire is 
mounted on an axis which allows it to freely rotate so it can rotate around, around its axis alright so you notice that when you ex connect this coil to an external circuit you will allow the current to flow in the coil so let's say the current is going upwards and then over here and then it goes downwards on the other side because the currents are flowing in different direction by Fleming's left hand rule the direction of the force that is felt will also be different so the forces if you use Fleming's left hand rule on this north to south so let me just show you so if I'm just focusing only on the left side here alright my magnetic field is pointing from north to south so I point father remember father mother and child force magnetic field and current north to south my current is pointing upwards in this direction then the force belt will be inwards here this will be the direction of the force that is felt well over here on the other side magnetic field is pointing there current is pointing downwards so the force is actually coming out towards you so the force is coming out towards you alright so because as a result of the forces that are being felt are opposite on opposite sides of this coil it will cause a rotation in the coil so the coil feels a force inwards here and feels a force upwards here so it will rotate in this direction so this is how we use current because if you look at it I'm only causing current to flow into the coil and I generate motion so this is how we generate um, kinetic energy from electrical energy Right, so this is just how it looks like if I'm looking at it from a top view again magnetic field is pointing from north to south so the magnetic field direction is such the current here if you don't know what this is watch the first video the current is going into out of the paper here and into the paper here so the forces felt one is upwards and the forces here is downwards so what this does is that it will cause a rotation in this direction it will cause it to rotate in this direction because the force belt here is upwards and the force belt over on this side is downwards so it will cause it to rotate now there are a few ways in which you can increase this turning effect on this coil you can increase the force felt on the coil of wire by first increasing the number of turns of the wire coil so basically one coil of the wire you have a north and a south here one coil of the wire you will feel the force going up and the force going down you add and you loop this one more time around the second coil will also feel the same force so if you it's a continuous wire of many coils when you double up the number of coils you double up the forces because each coil will have feel the same force so when i double up the coils i double up the force i triple the number of coils i triple the force now the other way you can do is I directly increase the current in the wire coil so with that it will also increase the uh, force that is felt on the coil but of course this is not as efficient as this one because increasing current means I have to increase the voltage um, and in general it's it, it, it requires more energy for you to generate double the amount of force by doubling the current Alright, so the application we are learning today is the DC motor. What it does is it converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. You see this in a lot of your household appliances, um, your toys, DVD players, the one where the portion of the disc that you need to spin rapidly, uh, your fans also is basically a DC motor. So uh, I have a little mock-up set up for you and I'll show it to you shortly. So I've done a quick mock-up of what the DC motor will look like so the basic components uh, are here so basically you have a you start off with a DC supply a battery or uh, some a power source that provides direct current and the current will flow in a circuit now the current is then connected to a coil of conducting wire shaped like a rectangle so don't mind this fancy looking contraption yet all right so current flows here through here up here and then it goes into the coil so in a coil it will move here current on this side will be moving upwards it completes the circuit current on the other side of the coil will be moving downwards and then it runs through the coil runs through this connector this semicircular looking connector 
down to the other end of DC supply. So now, uh, this is what a DC motor will look like. Now, nothing fancy. Yes, the current in the coil has a magnetic effect, but if there's no external magnetic field, then there won't be any force felt. So what they did was they now introduced an external magnetic field in the presence uh, by using a magnet. So they use a north and a south magnet. So just by using your Fleming's left hand rule, you know that there must be a force or you know that there must be a force felt on this coil of wire because of the presence of these two, the north and south, the magnet, uh, external magnets. So if I were to use Fleming's left hand rule to tell me where the direction is, magnetic field points from north to south. The current on this portion, if I'm looking only on the left side of the coil, is pointing away from me, north to south. Father, force, magnetic field, current, father, mother, child. So magnetic field, current pointing away from me, the force being felt is downwards. So this portion of the coil feels a downwards force. Over on this side of the coil, north to south, current is pointing towards me, the force being felt is upwards. So over on this side, I feel an upward force. Downward here, upward here, so it will cause this coil to rotate. So it rotates and it rotates until it reaches this point. Now, remember that this portion of the current or the coil is always feeling a downwards force. Over on this side, it's feeling an upwards force. So it will go and rotate until it reaches this point. Now at this point, the force is all on the top side now of the coil is always pointing upwards and this side is always pointing downwards. So now it is stuck in this position. It can no longer move. So, well, I mean, yes, you use electricity and you generated motion, but you only generated this kind of motion. So what uh, engineers smarter than you and me decided that, yes, I must allow it to complete its rotation. So that means now this side of the coil which feels upwards at this point at the apex of its turn must suddenly now switch to a downwards force so that it can now fully rotate in this direction. So now comes this fancy looking contraption here. So what they engineered was you have the external circuit still, your DC supply. What they did was they introduced carbon brushes. Now what are carbon brushes? It's just a brush where the brush portion here is just an electrical conductor, carbon. And then at the end of the coil, they introduced this split ring commutator. So split ring commutator sounds like a fancy name. Uh, don't be scared. It's just basically a piece of wire, just like how I've done, that looks semicircular in shape and over here, semicircular in shape. But it doesn't form a complete circle. There's a gap here, there's a gap here. So that's why it's called a split ring. Now, to achieve the effect of me rotating, 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 and then I want to flip it over on the other side so that the force is downwards, means I have to change the direction of the current. So because this side, the direction of the current is always this towards me. So that means the force that is being felt is always upwards. So this portion of the coil, once it reaches this apex motion, I want it to now have a force that is downwards, which means I must switch the direction of the current every half a cycle. And I achieve this through the use of the split ring commutator plus the carbon brushes. So the split ring commutator works like this. It is split ring is as a conductor, a normal conductor. It is it makes contact with the carbon brushes on each side. The carbon brushes are connected to the external circuit and this is what it looks like. As it rotates and it rotates and it rotates, there will come a point where actually it loses contact with the external circuit. So at this point, it loses contact with the external circuit. So previously before this, the black portion of the split ring was connected to this portion of the carbon brush. So the current flows in this direction, while the red portion of the split ring is connected to this side of the carbon brush and it's, the current flows out in this way. So when I now continue its rotation, at its apex, the red will now make contact. The red split ring will now make a contact with this carbon brush and the black will now make a contact with the other side. So initially it was like this, the black makes contact with this side, 
the red makes contact with that side at over at this point now my red side is making contact with the current going in and the black side is now where the current exits out so effectively what i've done is i switch the direction of the current at this apex motion which then allows the force to be felt to be opposite so instead of an upwards direction initially this was upwards initially this was downwards so it causes it now to turn and it flips the direction so that this one here the top part of the coil is now feeling a downwards force instead of upwards force so that it can continue its rotation then once it's done half a rotation now my black will again make contact with the other side and my red will make the contact with the other side so that the current switches direction again so effectively what i've done is whenever the coil is on this side the side nearer to the north it will always feel a downward force and over here the current that is uh, the portion of the coil that is nearer to the south side will always feel an upwards force because the current switches a direction every half a cycle so i do have a little animation to show you how it looks like a bit better all right so you have a coil and the coil is connected to the split ring the split ring is connected to carbon brushes and you have your external magnets and this is your coils of wire now the magnetic field of the external magnet is as shown by the yellow arrows north to south All right these are permanent magnets so when i connect it to an external supply a battery a dc supply current will flow here down the carbon brush into the split ring into the coil and then it moves in this direction so you can see the direction of the current it will move here and then up through here and then back to the battery or the dc negative terminal of the uh, dc power supply so by Fleming's left hand rule or magnetic magnetic interaction you can tell the direction so this feels a downwards force while over here feels an upwards force so this will cause the coil to rotate so it will rotate and it will rotate and it will rotate now uh, if I do not switch the direction of the current it will do like this half a rotation and it will stop there alright no point to that So what we need then is we need this coil now to point the force felt on this portion of the coil to go downwards and the only way we can achieve that is to switch the direction of the current felt on this portion of the coil. Alright, so we do that with the split ring carbon brush combo. So now the opposite side is now in contact with the positive terminal and this will cause a switch in the direction. So just have a look, initially it was towards you this portion of the coil now the current moves away from you and this causes the force felt to be in opposite direction which will then allow it to complete its rotation so now again we look at the split ring the blue portion the dark blue portion is connected to the left side now as my split ring as my coil completes its rotation so that's the split ring now my light blue makes contact with the positive terminal which then at this apex will switch the direction of the current and which will then cause the force felt to be downwards so initially it was going towards me the top part and then now it's going away from me and the forces switch direction which allows then my coil to complete its rotation all right so just have a look so let me just go back force upwards upwards current switch direction force downwards down 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 over here force upwards current towards me because of the split ring combination current switch direction force is downwards and it completes its rotation all right so we're back now to our notes so this is what the diagram usually looks like in your exam you got a cell positive negative terminal current flows through this is to your carbon brush these are your split ring commutators split ring commutators connected to the coil you got your permanent magnets on each side north and south right so the wire coil is mounted on the axle here pq which allows it to rotate freely and the ends of the coil is connected to the split ring commutator all right the carbon brushes press lightly to provide contact electrical contact between the carbon brushes and the split rings and then you can tell the directions of the forces on each side of the coil using Fleming's left hand rule. So uh, I explained this in the previous one, but just 
just for you to take note and uh, this is not in your notes so I just hope that you can copy it down the split ring commutator the function is so that it reverses the direction of current in the coil every half a cycle and this is important because you need the, the current to change direction so that the forces felt will change direction so that it can complete a rotation carbon brush it allows the moving parts which is the coil and the split rings the moving parts to remain in electrical contact with the non-moving parts which is your carbon brushes and your external circuit which is your DC supply now just for you to take note when your coil is in the vertical orientation all right at that point your split ring commutators loses contact with the carbon brush just for a little while all right because it is no longer in contact with the carbon brush remember your split rings uh, look like this all right it loses contact with the carbon brushes so what happens then is that the momentum carries it through and then the split ring originally on the right side will make contact with the left side so because of that the direction to the current in the coil is reversed and therefore it allows me to complete a rotation all right so functions of split ring commutator is to reverse the direction of the current how you can increase the turning effect of the current carrying wire coil you can do that by increasing the number of turns we discussed this already increasing the current of the coil the second way is you can also insert a soft iron core in the center of the coil here all right so uh, to explain the force on the current carrying conductor, we already went through this magnetic field of the permanent magnet interacts with the magnetic field of the current in this results in the force being felt. So that is it for DC motors.